Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the engineering and technical manager here at RegoFix USA. One of the most common problems we see when we talk about clamping cutting tools is how much shank length do I need to hold on to? So for today's video, we're gonna talk about how much shank length needs to be in an ER collet. One of the most common things we see that happens or we get questioned on on a weekly basis is how much tool projection or shank length do I need to have in my ER collet? And the question is actually really valid because what's happening on the shop floor? So here's my uh, HSK ER32 cutting tool and I have a half inch tool in it. If I'm out of my machine and I find that I don't have enough length on this, I'm probably not gonna go back and try to find a longer cutting tool. I'm just gonna pop the nut loose and I'm gonna pull this out as far as I need to to get the reach I need. Then I'm gonna tighten it back up. Well, RegoFix being the inventor of the ER collet and one of the premier manufacturers, well, we kinda of know what happens when, when you do that and that's what we wanna share with you today. So, what is happening? Here I have a, an ER32 cutaway collet and I have a gauge pin that represents my cutting tool. Now, ideally, my cutting tool is gonna to go all the way through my collet, giving me plenty of shank to hold on to. Well, but if I look at how much I have here, I may not have enough. And the question comes, how far can I pull it out? Well, that's actually a rule of thumb. And the rule of thumb is two thirds the bore length has to have the collet in it. So I can actually pull that out to about right there. And I still have plenty of tool shank inside of that collet to maintain proper clamping. What we end up seeing happen a lot of times though is you need even more length, so they pull it up a little farther, and when the tool's been pulled out to a distance like this, normally the operator knows they've stretched the limits a little bit, so they apply a little more torque to it, which causes problems with my tool holders that we'll talk about in just a moment. Ideally, as I mentioned a few moments ago, you want to have two-thirds the bore length of the collet with the cutting tool in it. Now, if you've watched some previous Tech Chat videos, you know there are counterbore and throughbore collets. Well, this is an easy thing to figure out. I can take that collet, I can look at the back of it, and I can see if I have a counterbore or not, or I can reference the RegoFix catalog to see what design my particular collet is and what that bore length is. So feel free to get the catalog from the link below or from the website. Plenty of good information in there on that. But what happens when I cheat the system? So let's bring a graphic up on the screen and let's talk about stress values. So on the first graphic here, you can see what's represented as the optimum clamping setup. The cutting tool goes all the way through the collet and my tool holder stress is virtually the entire length of the collet. So I have plenty of material and material thickness to absorb any clamping force I put on that. So best setup possible. This next graphic shows what happens when I'm at the minimum value. This is the two thirds value of the collet. Now you can see that I have a quite a bit less orange on the side where my stress values are. So it's actually on the thinner, thinner part of the collet cavity, but I still have quite a bit of material and it's not really an issue for the tool holder. This is the minimum value for tool depth. But what normally happens is what's going to happen you're going to see next. This graphic actually shows what happens when you cheat the system. So in this one, I needed a little bit more tool length. I've edged my cutting tool out a little farther. I've probably even put a little extra torque on my nut to make sure I'm holding on to it. The problem is look how small the orange value or area is on this tool holder cavity. It is reduced significantly. And what's more, than, more important than that, well, if you look at your tool holder, the way that it's made, up near the top of the collet is the collet cavity is actually the thinnest part of the material. I'm now putting all the stress on the thinnest part of that tool holder. That's where you run into problems. 
that's where a little extra torque, a little extra force, maybe an aggressive machining program puts too much force on it and you can actually damage the tool holder, and in some cases even the collet. So it's really important to make sure that you are following the minimum tool engagement of two thirds the bore length and following the recommended nut torques. If the cutting tool you are using doesn't have the proper length to it, see if you can find a longer one in your tool crib and continue on with your operation. I hope the information we've provided today on how much shank length you need to hold onto inside that ER collet is valuable to you. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to your RegoFix technical team. We're, we are here to answer questions. My name is David McHenry. Thank you for watching.